Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tori. I'm so happy that you're here. Today, we will be doing my reading bullet journal or my book bullet journal for November. I cannot believe that it's November already. I hope that you had the most wonderful October and that it was everything that you dreamed it would be. I can't believe how fast it went and that it's November already. In October, I read the Tea Dragon Society books, which are like graphic novels if you've never heard of them. They're so cute. The illustration style is absolutely stunning. Go read them if you just love like cute stories and obviously they're graphic novels, so they're stu super fast to read. That was my inspiration for this spread. So I have some of the little tea dragons that I thought were absolutely adorable. I sketched them into this spread and I just use the vibe from those books in this spread as well. So it's very planty. It's very whimsical. Um, I have pumpkins. I have mushrooms because when I think of November, that's what I think of. And this spread is so much more colorful than any of my other spreads and it made me very, very nervous. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I was really questioning when I was doing this first page of whether I had made a mistake or not, but I was very, very happy. I stuck through it. I trusted the process fully, and I am just so, so happy with how this spread came out. This was a long, 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 long spread. So I started at like 11.30 a.m. and I finished it around five o'clock. I did take like an hour lunch break in between, but I don't usually use this much color, like I said, <laughs> which I was very nervous about. And it's all illustration. And usually I will incorporate washi tapes and stickers because you can get through spreads a little bit quicker when you're adding, you know, your decorative aesthetic pieces on each page, you know, that are just stickers. It's much easier to just pop something in. But the spread was so unique and I was so, so inspired by the Tea Dragon Society books that I was so, so excited to just like draw. And it was so nice to have basically a whole day where I just sat down and drew and colored. It was the best thing for like my mental state. Like I came out of this and I was like, okay, now I just need to like mush and veg out for a little bit. But I, it was such a relaxing process. And like when you're drawing, you're not really thinking about like a lot of other stuff. Like you're just focused, at least for me, I'm just focused on the task at hand and things that I want to add, like little details, what I think would look nice. And it was just the best. <laughs> just the absolute best. So for this spread, I go through like I usually do and I sketch everything out in pencil and I really just used my Tombow markers. So I recently got the citrus pack of colors and that's what I'm using in this, which is so funny. Like it said that they were the citrus pack, but the oranges and the yellows and the greens, I just thought were really nice for an autumnal vibe. They are obviously pretty bright, but I love it. I think it looks so nice. And I will fully admit, I finished this first page, so like my November title page spread, and then I started on my second page, my bookshelves. And that's when I needed to take my lunch break and like step away from it for a little while because I always get very intimidated by choosing colors. I don't know why, but that's the most intimidating part of like drawing and just creating art in general is the color palette for me because I get so scared that I'm going to ruin my illustrations with color. So I'm, I'm very intimidated by color. I'm, and so I stepped away because I was looking at it 
and I really wasn't sure about it. I'm not even kidding. I almost was like, okay, maybe I just need to like rip this out and redoodle everything and do it without color. I'm so happy <laughs> that I did not do that. Um, it got better. I, I had to trust the process for sure. Um, this was very out of my comfort zone. So yeah, I stepped away. I had lunch. I came back to it and I was like, nope, I'm going to see this through. I'm going to do all of the pages. And then once I get to the end, we'll see what I think and what I want to do from there. And by the end of it, I was so happy with it. <laughs> Then we have my bookshelves spread, my monthly bookshelves, and my to-be-read spread. I did my bookshelves a little bit different um, this month. I took my inspiration from Mandy Journals. She is on Instagram, and I don't think that she has a YouTube. She doesn't like do bullet journal YouTube videos, but her bookshelves that she does are so cute, and you guys know that I love doing my monthly bookshelves spreads. So rather than doing them just as like a 2D illustration, these are just a little bit more um, 3D, giving the bookshelves a little bit more depth. Um, the books are still pretty 2D, but the pumpkins are a little bit more like 3D and dimensional and stuff like that. I really like how they came out. I always think it's fun to just try something different. If you love it, then perfect, keep doing it. If you don't like it, try something new next time. Um, so that's what I did with my bookshelves. I'm super, super happy with them. I gave myself room for 15 books this month. Um, in October, I read 11, which was a really good month for me, but I'm not gonna lie, I kind of hit like a reading wall in October, a really, really hard reading wall. And it was pretty awful because I liked what I was reading, but I had zero attention span. Like I got to my 10th book, and it was rough. And so I took probably the last like 10 days of the month of October off of reading because I just like mentally could not process it and be in that book. Um, so we'll see how November goes. I just always like to give myself more books on my bookshelves than what I think I'll need because then if I end up reading 15, then that's crazy, good for me. Um, but I would be really heartbroken if I ran out of books and I didn't have a space to um, put something in. Not only was my November spread really stepping out of my comfort zone with color, but I also took a much more detailed approach to the spread. And what I mean by that is if you saw my October bullet journal spread, I'll link the video up above. Um, it was much more simple. So although I did, you know, my illustrations, I basically did black and white. <laughs> um, and I also just kept the illustrations and like the pages as a whole, very simple and minimalistic, I think is a good word. This one, I just went all out. You know, I did the little sparkles all over the pages. I did a lot of doodles. I did a lot of details, even on the, calligraphy and like the titles that I was doing rather than you know just having it be the the plain title I went back and did little lines and dots like all around the letters to make it that much more you know whimsical magical type and I think it fit this theme really well I was very happy with it but that was kind of another element that I don't usually use in my illustration style and in my doodle and drawing style I usually, you know, my comfort zone is <laughs> simple and pretty minimalistic, but it's always good to push yourself out of what you're used to doing. And that's what this spread really did for me. And I think that's why I loved it that much more. You know, when I finished it and when I was looking back on it, I was like, this is so cool. Like I did this and this is very different than what I've done for the last 
what is it, four, four months. Um, and it's awesome. So this is your, I don't know, inspiration or push, if you will, to try something to step out of your comfort zone. So these are my two new pages for the month of November. I've never done these pages before. I'm not sure how to describe it. Kind of just like a really adorable little list idea. And I took inspiration from Kelsey.doodles, who's on Instagram. Her bullet journal spreads are absolutely stunning. Like, go check out her Instagram. It is amazing. But she posted basically a list like this um, that she had for, for her monthly spread. And I thought it was such a cute idea because obviously this bullet journal for me is my book tracking and reading tracking journal. Um, but it's nice to know like, you know, what I was watching November of 21, what I was focusing on, what I was enjoying and what I was learning. Um, on hers, she also had what she's reading, but this whole journal is dedicated to what I'm reading. So I just excluded that on this little list. And I love it so much. And that's actually one of my favorite pages. Actually, scratch that. It is my favorite page in my whole November spread because I love, so this tea dragon that I drew here, her name is Chamomile and she's so cute. <laughs> and she's my favorite. And also I just loved it so much because again, it's a new page for me and I'm very excited to use it. So that page is my absolute favorite page of this entire month. And then on the right, I have my mood tracker. And this is like a reading edition. So each day of the month, I have a little illustration that I'm gonna color in a different color. And it's going to indicate how my reading mood was for that day. You can see on my list page, that's where I use stickers just to stick in my little list. Those stickers are from Paper Geek Co. And if you're curious, all of the supplies that I use, I always link in the description box down below if you are curious about what I'm using. My journal is linked down there as well. I use an Archer and Olive journal, and I get the Neapolitan journal because I couldn't decide what color pages I wanted for my spreads, and I wanted to try out all different types of the colored pages, for the rest of my spread, the beginning pages of it, they were all white pages. And now I'm getting into a section of like the craft paper colored pages. I love it. I love just whether it's in the middle of a spread or if a new month starts with a new color page, like my September spread were, was black pages. So I love it because you get to use different supplies depending on what color pages you have. I love the craft paper in this because with this color palette, it just makes the page look a little bit more warm. If you are on the fence about what color you should get for your bullet journal, or if you've only ever used like one color paper, I recommend getting the Neapolitan or just like experimenting with different color background papers. It's just so much fun. The other thing that I love, and then I'll stop ranting about different colored papers. The other thing that I love about the craft paper, obviously you can tell I sketch out my spreads in pencil before I actually go in with whatever medium I'm gonna be using to, to add color to it and make it more finalized. The craft paper, when you go to erase pencil markings, it erases completely. And it's the same thing with the black paper as well. The white paper is a little bit trickier for me to use because even though I press really, really lightly with my pencil for my doodles, even when I erase it, it doesn't fully come off of the page.
last two pages. The one on the left is my favorite book of the month. The one on the right is my monthly stats. I always keep these ones pretty simple. Um, I just love the layout that I have for them. It works really well for me. For my monthly stats this month, I usually separate out, um, I do total books, I usually do audiobooks and then I do total pages. For this month, I switched it to total books, total pages, and genres that I've read. I've been having a really tricky time with audiobooks lately. I just feel like my experience of when I listen to an audiobook versus when I actually read the physical book or, or on my Kindle, like the act of reading it, helps because I, I prefer the way that the characters talk in my mind and just I picture it better when I'm actually reading the book. Audiobooks are just such a different experience with me. I have to be very like selective with the audiobooks that I'm listening to. Um, I often find that like for me self-help books like more spiritual books meaning like I love manifestation and reading about like the law of attraction and stuff like that. If I listen to audiobooks um, in those genres love them because it feels like someone's like teaching me and talking to me about those things so like non-fiction books non-fiction audiobooks are my cup of tea but I hate listening to fantasy audiobooks it's just not the same experience for me um, and I'm just finding that overall listening to really any fiction book in the audiobook format is difficult for me so for this month, um, for November, I left that part out and I'm just going to track total books, total pages, and genres. If I do end up listening to an audiobook, I'll just put it under total books. Here's my final flip through. If you liked this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I post every Sunday and I post reading and book content as well as book bullet journal content. And if you have read the Tea Dragon Society or if you liked the spread, please leave me a dragon emoji down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.